Hello, how's it going? Today I'm going to share a poem by Li Young Lee, and uh, the poem is titled Mnemonic. It is a poem that deals with memory, and the title of the poem, Mnemonic, um, basically means related to memory, or um, ways that we memorize things, like a memory system. I don't know if you've ever used a mnemonic but for instance, if you're studying uh, science and you, you wanted to remember uh, the order of the planets coming out from the sun. Some people used to use a rhyme, something like, um, my very educated mother just served us nine potatoes. Um, meaning Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune and Pluto. Nowadays, Pluto doesn't get counted among the planets, but that was an example of a mnemonic. And in the poem, uh, Lee Young Lee's father is a sort of memory expert. He has found ways of memorizing huge amounts of data, that sort of thing, we are told. Uh, whereas the poet himself um, has a memory that's more disorganized. And so what we get is memories of his father just through a few images. So um, besides that one vocabulary word, mnemonic, the other word I'd like to be sure you know is flamboyant. And flamboyant just basically means bright, colorful, attention getting, like a flame, right? So if the sweater once had a flamboyant blue color, it was brightly colored. Okay, the rest of the vocabulary of the poem itself is relatively simple. So let me get right into it. I will read it to you and explain my thinking as I try to interpret it. And then we'll read it through one more time. I was tired, so I lay down. My lids grew heavy. That is, my eyelids were growing heavy. So I slept. Slender memory, stay with me. Memory, which is... Thin could perhaps be broken or lost. So this person is going to sleep and hoping as sleeping not to lose some of his memories, perhaps. I was cold once, so my father took off his blue sweater. He wrapped me in it and I never gave it back. It is the sweater he wore to America. This one, which I've grown into, whose sleeves are too long. So... He has a memento, a, a memory item, something to help him remember his father. His father, when he was a child, um, took off the blue sweater and gave it to him to keep him warm, and he wound up keeping it. As we find as the poem goes forward, uh, his father is passed on, so he's no longer with him, and this sweater is the item that he has to remind him of his father. This one, which I've grown into, whose sleeves are too long, whose elbows have thinned, who outlives its rightful owner. So the sweater has gotten older, right? It, it has thin material on the elbow, and the sweater has outlived his father. He still has the sweater. He doesn't have the father anymore. Flamboyant blue in daylight, poor blue by daylight, it is black in the folds. In this line, I read the passage of time. First a bright sweater, then a dull sweater, having lost some of its color, having black in the folds, the color is running and changing. So, we can see the passage of time in this sweater. A serious man who devised complex systems of numbers and rhymes to aid him in remembering. A man who forgot nothing. So his father, the memory expert, who uses mnemonic systems to help remember everything. My father would be ashamed of me. Not because I'm forgetful, but because there is no order to my memory. A heap of details, uncatalogued, illogical. So this man, whose father has passed on a long time ago, is feeling a little ashamed of himself, in fact, and thinking his father would judge him for the weakness of his memory because it's disorganized. 
Now he shares some memories, and they're just glimpses of ideas and images. For instance, God was lonely, so he made me. Perhaps um, change in understanding of the notion God created man in his own image. Um, but here he's personalizing it. I came to be born myself because God needed another person in the world. My father loved me, so he spanked me. It hurt him to do so. He did it daily. So he has memories, bitter memories, of having been hit by his father as well. And there's that kind of classic conflicted image of discipline that some parents give to their kids. Um, the old story, it hurts me more than it hurts you. Uh, so he, he understands that his father hit him, but he saw it as doing it out of love and uh, that it was also painful for the parent to be a disciplinarian. Thinking about this, if I go back to the earlier line, God was lonely, so made he made me. This could also be a reflection of his father as like his God because his father brought him into life, Right? Carrying on, the earth is flat, those who fall off don't return. The earth is round, all things reveal themselves to men only gradually. I thought these two lines were very interesting, and I could see them in more than one way. So it could just simply be from the childish, childish perception of the world with a flat earth to a more mature understanding of the world as the earth round. But also, another way to think of it, the earth is flat, those who fall off don't return. He could be referring to the fact that when someone passes away into death, there's no return. So this, metaphorically, the flat earth is an image of an earth in which you're on it or you're off it, and there's no coming back. And in the next line, the earth is round, all things reveal themselves to men only gradually. Does this mean that he only gradually came to understand the science of the world, that the earth is round? Or, metaphorically, if you're on a round earth, there's a horizon, and as you travel over the horizon, you can only see so much of the world. Literally, all things reveal themselves to men only gradually on a round earth. So this could be metaphorical for the fact that we're always in a state of only partial knowledge, partial understanding. We can't see it all. Those are two different ways to read it. You might read it a different way. I'll move on. It won't last. Memory is sweet. Even when it's painful, memory is sweet. So nothing lasts forever, perhaps. Our memories are only with us for so long even remembering hard things, such as being disciplined by his father and uh, remembering the sweater that his father gave him as perhaps the last really um, sentimental memory to connect him with the father that he lost. This is a painful memory, but in some sense it's also sweet to him. Once I was cold, so my father took off his blue sweater. So he returns to this one image, the image that is the most meaningful in the poem to him, the last connection he has to his father. So it's a poem that could be full of a lot of pondering and a lot of sadness, um, and also just sort of a connection over time to the child he was and the father he had. I will read it one more time without bothering to interpret it anymore. I will let you hear it and think about it in the way that makes sense to you. I was tired, so I lay down. My lids grew heavy, so I slept. Slender memory, stay with me. I was cold once, so my father took off his blue sweater. He wrapped me in it, and I never gave it back. It is the sweater he wore to America, this one, which I've grown into, whose sleeves are too long, whose elbows have thinned, who outlives its rightful owner. Flamboyant blue in the daylight, poor blue in the daylight, it is black in the folds. 
a serious man who devised complex systems of numbers and rhymes to aid him in remembering, a man who forgot nothing. My father would be ashamed of me. Not because I'm forgetful, but because there is no order to my memory, a heap of details, uncatalogued, illogical. For instance, God was lonely, so he made me. My father loved me, so he spanked me. It hurt him to do so. He did it daily. The earth is flat. Those who fall off don't return. The earth is round. All things reveal themselves to men only gradually. It won't last. Memory is sweet. Even when it's painful, memory is sweet. Once I was cold, so my father took off his blue sweater. All right. So I'll leave it to you to think about it. You may want to read it through one more time yourself. Share your thoughts, and I'll speak to you again with another poem tomorrow.